A screen that can fold, a screen that can slide, a screen that can do both. Samsung Display was one of the many companies I saw last week in Las Vegas. And while these concept demos aren't quite ready for market, most of the other stuff I'm about to show you is. I'm Michael Fisher, and from satellites you control to boats that fly to laptops that might just break your brain, this is the stuff that stuck with me from the 2023 Consumer Electronics Show. I don't know how you like to start a new year, but for me, it's speed walking 10 miles a day through casinos choked with cigarette smoke in 0% humidity, carrying 15 pounds of gear on my back just for a chance of seeing something weird. Hey, this qualifies. It's not my favorite laptop from CES, stay tuned, but it's certainly at the top of my list for real world testing when it comes out this spring. Lenovo has been keeping it weird at trade shows ever since I started going to them, and its Yogabook 9i keeps that legacy going. What starts as a typical-looking laptop opens to reveal not one, but two 2.8K touchscreens, one of which becomes a keyboard and trackpad, complete with haptics. If you're thinking that's a terrible tactile trade-off just to get more screen area, well, not to worry. The 9i comes with a Bluetooth keyboard in the box, tucked away inside a protective case that unfolds, origami style, to become a stand. And that lets you prop up the PC in either landscape or portrait and let Windows 11 spread out on dual 13.3-inch OLEDs, either waterfalling a single program across both displays or, more usefully in my opinion, running multiple apps side by side. Now, this is giving you flashbacks to Lenovo's foldable PCs, well, that's understandable. And if those flashbacks are none too pleasant, well, that makes sense, too. The first ThinkPad X1 Fold was a disappointment because it was built for a version of Windows that was canceled before Lenovo even shipped it. And the second X1 Fold hasn't yet come to market, even though it was due back in November. I also find it strange that the company keeps using Intel silicon here, in this case a 13th generation Intel U-series Core i7, instead of Qualcomm's Snapdragon chips, which were specifically built for slim and light designs like this. All that is to say that you'll want to wait for full reviews before you get carried away on the hype train here. But you know how much I love a device that pushes the boundaries of mobile computing, and I'm cautiously optimistic about this one. You know, for all the trouble Windows has had adapting to foldable screens, we know it does very well on PCs with more than one screen. And maybe that built-in platform advantage will be enough of a head start for the Yogabook 9i to bring weird computing into the mainstream. Or at least the mainstream that can afford a starting price of $2,100. Lenovo is showing a lot of crazy stuff at CES. There's something called a magic bay on its ThinkBook 16P that recalls the old Motorola Moto Z with magnetic accessories. Hey, you can just slap on an LTE modem or a 4K webcam with a 270 degree hinge or a webcam light with 200 lux brightness to make sure your face really pops on those Zoom calls. Lenovo also had a laptop called the ThinkBook Twist on site that backed up its 13-inch OLED display with another touchscreen featuring e-ink on the other side. That's pretty cool. But that's not the e-paper that excited me most. And no, I'm not talking about the example everyone else is talking about, although it was admittedly cool to see BMW cover an entire concept car in the new Prism 3 material. And no, it wasn't the e-ink on the watch face of Fossil's new Gen 6 Wellness Hybrid smartwatch, although it was oddly fun to see said e-ink interacting with mechanical hands and letting Alexa do her thing, for better or worse. No, no, the demo that caught my eye was a little curio, tucked into the back of a ballroom briefing bay behind all the price tags and license plates and tablets and even smartphones, an e-ink panel that folds in half. It was just a demo chassis, and no partners have yet been announced to manufacture products based on it, but it was real color e-ink, complete with front light, folding in half like a Galaxy Fold. I immediately envisioned Amazon Kindles and Onyx Books that fold in half just like the phones to give you that same portability with the daylight readability and excellent battery life of an e-reader. Thankfully, it wasn't all hotel suites and show floors. 
On my second day on the ground, zero hour, 9 a.m., Qualcomm loaded a few of us onto a bus and drove us to, well, the middle of nowhere in the Nevada desert. Tom, what are we doing here? I don't know. I don't have no idea. What's going to do? Are they going to? Are they going to disappear us? Fortunately, the company had campfires and, more importantly, coffee ready for us. And it turns out that being a long way from everything, well, that was kind of the whole point. I've seen this episode of Medical Soul. I know <laughs> Snapdragon Satellite is Qualcomm's answer to the iPhone's emergency SOS feature, and if it works as advertised, it looks to be more capable than Apple's offering. It works like this. When you're outside of cellular coverage beyond the range of a network, your phone will instead connect to the Iridium constellation of 66 satellites in low Earth orbit, and that will allow you to send and receive SMS text messages. Thanks to a partnership with Garmin, you'll be covered for emergency situations as well. But this is not just for emergencies. It's for any kind of two-way texting you'd like to do. No nearby cell tower required. You still need a clear view of the sky, and you still can't do things like voice calling or data transfers. But it's kind of wild to see satellite integration progressing this quickly. When this time last year, you still needed big, bulky sat phones to get any kind of connection outside of cell network range. Oh, and to be clear, no, you will not need to use this big brick-like reference hardware. Snapdragon Satellite will come to regular smartphones, first to those running Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset starting in the second half of this year. Exact pricing and exact availability are up to manufacturers and carriers, and as such, are TBD. Speaking of space, on the same day I was out in the desert testing satellites, Sony was sending up one of its own. Starsphere is a space inspiration project built around a so-called nanosatellite, not much bigger than a briefcase, which contains a Sony full-frame camera and not much else. Here's the cool part. Consumers will be able to control that camera from the ground, shooting photos or videos of the Earth or the skies above, and the usage rights to that content will remain with the creators. Beyond just being an orbiting photo platform, it's a real-time connection to low Earth orbit, made possible by a camera almost identical to the one I use on the ground every day. Starsphere will come to the US and Japan later this year. Okay, you can bring me back down to Earth, but you can't make me stay on dry land. Sorry, John Deere, your giant sprayer is rad with its 36 cameras and 10 graphics processors analyzing 2,100 square feet per second to kill weeds at 12 miles an hour. But I'm a son of a son of a sailor, and so Candela was the only vehicle I was making much time for this CES. Gotta admit, I wasn't expecting to find a boat at CES, let alone an electrically powered flying boat. But um, here we are. Yep, the Candela c 8s electric power plant is notable on its own, with its torpedo-like propulsion pod and counter-rotating propellers capable of pushing it to a cruising speed of 22 knots, and its 44-kilowatt-hour battery offering a claimed 50 nautical miles of range. It's also plenty comfortable below deck, as my audition selfies for Boat Babe magazine demonstrate. And the fly-by-wire control system gives it a digital cockpit that reminds me of a nautical answer to the Tesla. But what really makes the C8 special is what happens when it gets above 16 knots or so. The hydrofoils descend into the water as the speed picks up under computer control, and the whole 3,500-pound vessel lifts out of the water to become a flying boat, more efficient, more comfortable, and leaving almost no wake in its wake. Obviously, a full demonstration wasn't available on the carpeted seas of the Las Vegas Convention Center, but I'm looking forward to potentially taking a cruise on the C8 in February. Drop a comment below if that's something you'd like to see as a break from the usual mobile tech here on Mr. Mobile. Speaking of the usual tech coverage, there was an awful lot of that at CES. LG was on hand with its newly designed LG Gram laptops, impossibly light and positively more beautiful than ever. The Wireless Power Consortium was also in attendance, showcasing the new Qi2 protocol that'll bring MagSafe-like magnetic attachments to Android wireless charging, hopefully before the holiday season. 
And Razer was there, with big laptops, a big ol' honkin' webcam, a soundbar that tracks your head to give you the best sound no matter how much you move, which is kinda creepy, and the Razer Edge I saw back at the Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit, bringing mobile gaming over a 5G connection to people who want that kind of thing. But the product that really blew me away came from Asus. <laughs> and that part wasn't a surprise. The manufacturer has consistently impressed me with its unconventional laptop designs over the past few years. What was a surprise? It's finally found a way to make 3D worth your time. When I first laid eyes on the ProArt StudioBook 16 3D, my brain kinda <laughs> uh, broke. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to work at it. Like, yeah. There are no glasses required, no special anything. You just walk up to the machine and then you you kind of give yourself a minute to uh, adapt. Here's me poorly trying to explain it for Instagram on my first look a few days ago. I want this to, be, I want to be able to convey this and I it can't. It is impossible to understand how weird it is to me that there, there is not a model, there's not a watch right here. That in, as far as my brain understands it, there is a giant 3D model of a Breitling watch which should be in the frame for you and it's not and it's breaking my head a little bit and I, I in, in, a, in a really in a really cool way this is weird 3d has always been weird but this is a different thing entirely yeah as hard as it is to explain it's even harder to capture on camera the studio book uses a layer of lenticular lenses laid over its OLED screen to produce the 3d effect but it also relies on these auto-stereoscopic cameras to track your face so it can manipulate what's on screen to complete the illusion. Fortunately, Asus thought of that and gave me a custom foam core mask to fit my camera into, which <laughs> definitely qualifies as one of the strangest moments of CES. But unfortunately, this kind of thing is just too difficult to capture on film, regardless of how hard you try to trick it. It really is something you need to experience firsthand. It's also plagued by the same problem that 3D initiatives like this always run into. You need specialized content that takes advantage of the platform in order to make it worth the added cost and complexity. Regardless, though, the experience of manipulating 3D models with a wand or just experiencing the brain-bending contradiction of an object that appeared to be right in front of me in space, but wasn't, it's the thing that most made me feel like I was living in the future at this year's Consumer Electronics Show. And since that's kind of the best part for me, the Asus ProArt StudioBook 16 3D wins the Mr. Mobile Best in Show Award at CES 2023. Folks, maybe you can hear it in my voice. Maybe you could see it in my eyes in some of that A-roll. The combination of a soulless, tacky construct like the Las Vegas Strip and the absolutely relentless schedule of a trade show is a brutal combination that has left this old man, like Palpatine, scarred and deformed. But my excitement for the technology of our times is stronger than ever. Let me know the tech that stuck with you from CES 2023 in the comments. Subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube so you don't miss my upcoming reviews of some of these products. And be sure to check out my story highlight at The Mr. Mobile on Instagram to see some of the slice of life behind the scenes stuff that I couldn't fit into this video. Many of the companies featured here hosted cocktail parties, dinners, and other social events that are the day-to-day -day life of tech trade shows, many of which I attended. But as always with Mr. Mobile, none of the manufacturers featured were given any editorial input into this content or copy approval of it. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.